Hey, Shoreline family, this is encouragement number three in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. I hope that you are safe. I hope that you are well. And really just the purpose of these short little videos is just to bring a little bit of uh, perspective and clarity and hopefully um, get our hearts aligned with what ultimately matters, which is uh, Jesus's kingdom and how we're living as his disciples. So last week, um, I just did a little encouragement based on the life of Job um, that we saw in the life of Job, this whole idea of uh, orientation to disorientation to reorientation and how um, we can expect to walk through really hard times this side of eternity. We looked at the fact that Jesus was a man um, of sorrows, it says in Isaiah chapter 53, he was acquainted with uh, grief. And so lament in the heart of a follower of Jesus is actually a really important thing to cultivate. Um, and we do that, of course, when life feels out of control, when we come up against seasons and situations that really um, seem to knock us, uh, knock us down or shake us in a lot of ways to our core. So if you're feeling that way, if you're feeling shaken, um, you're in good company. A lot of people are, um, but we want to cling to the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. So today I want to shift uh, our attention a little bit to the opportunity or at least the, the missional opportunity that's before us as we uh, deal with the coronavirus pandemic. Um, a number of years ago, I read a book, I've got it right here, called The Forgotten Ways by Alan Hirsch. Um, I have marked up this book tremendously. Alan Hirsch is, a, uh, I guess he would describe himself as a, a missiologist. So he's someone who thinks about the mission of the church and how, how is it that we reach people for Jesus Christ. And one of the things that I've always found so um, fascinating about The Forgotten Ways is that uh, Alan Hirsch introduces this concept uh, that he calls liminality, L-I-M-I-N-A-L-T-Y. I think I spelled that right. Liminality, which basically um, was a term coined by an anthropologist in the late 60s um, to mean a threshold. So this anthropologist talked about it like um, in certain African tribes, for example, where um, predominantly the women sort of raise the children in those tribes uh, until the kids get to be a certain age. And the boys in particular, once they hit uh, age 12 or 13, they go through this threshold experience where uh, in the middle of the night, the men uh, take them from, from their dwelling places and they basically take them out into the wilderness and they teach them survival and what it means to come together as a community, to rely upon one another, and they come back uh, into the village reintegrated as men. Um, but he describes the fact that in Christianity, all throughout history, there were certain points of liminality or these thresholds um, where the gospel of Jesus Christ seems to just take off in powerful ways. Think about um, Acts chapter 7 when Stephen gets uh, stoned for his faith, right? He's the first Christian martyr. And then we know that the believers uh, just began to disperse from that point. And what happened, of course, was that the gospel then spread. The disciples may have uh, just stuck around town. They may have just hung out with each other unless something propelled them outward, right? And so um, if you think about it, all throughout the scriptures, the Exodus and the Old Testament, um, the prophets coming onto the scene, these were experiences of, of liminality where, where there was this radical kind of um, thing that happened that moved the mission of God on planet Earth forward. A more recent example would be 9-11 or the tsunamis in 2006 that impacted Thailand. So when these global events took place, it shook us to our core, right? Um, but to the same degree, there was this, there was this sense of urgency and we saw how um, even outside of the church, people band together to, um, to love and care for one another. In New York City, for example, um, a city known for kind of its brashness and uh, kind of you know, dog-eat-dog -dog culture, 
became this amazing culture of love and support where the firefighters and the community and everybody was coming together to care for those who were affected by um, those terrorist attacks. And so what we have, I really believe, with the coronavirus is this threshold. There's a sense in which um, our safety nets feel um, insecure, right? The, the stock market, things aren't going the way we would want. Um, and so, but as believers of Jesus Christ, we have the opportunity to step into that space, to say, okay, you know what? Ultimately, my foundation is built upon Christ. When Jesus gave us the example of building our house either on the sand or the rock, he was giving us an invitation to say, no matter what storms come in your life, choose to, to unswervingly commit yourself to me. So that when, not if, but when those rains come and the winds pick up, your anchor will be secure in the Lord, right? So um, just an encouragement, let's use this season and recognize it for what it is, that God is doing something unique through it. Um, we were out in the neighborhood the other night with our neighbors, um, talking, keeping social distancing in mind, of course, but we were talking out in the um, out in the cul-de-sac and I got to talk with neighbors that I've, I've honestly never had uh, longer than a, hey, how's it going, conversation with, um, and got to hear a bit of their story. The woman um, comes from a Lutheran background, and so she was talking to me about her experience in church and growing up and all these kinds of things. And that never would have been really possible or um, likely in a different time. So just be on the lookout. And I just want to lead you in a little prayer that would say, okay, God, in the midst of this, show me how I can press into your kingdom. How is it that I can be about sharing the hope, sharing the, the calm, sharing the peace of Jesus Christ when so many people are um, unraveling in a lot of ways around us. So would you just pray with me at this time? Father God, thank you for liminality. Thank you that we come to these thresholds in life where there is um, an opportunity to bring the reality of your kingdom to bear. And so I just pray, God, that we would be people who um, initiate loving conversations with neighbors who are um, open to helping where we can, whether that's calling someone in the neighborhood who may be older or um, reaching out in, in service projects and opportunities that we have at the shoreline. Whatever the case may be, Lord, may we be those who are listening to your Holy Spirit in this season and just simply saying, yes, Jesus, use me. Um, in the words of Isaiah, here am I, Lord, send me. In the midst of all of this, send me. Uh, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. One last scripture I want to encourage you guys with, and that is Acts 20, 24. Um, the Apostle Paul is writing, and Paul, of course, I mean, his life was filled with liminality, right? Um, just read uh, 2 Corinthians and, and the stories of how he got shipwrecked and beaten and all of these things, but it ultimately served uh, to allow him to minister in powerful kinds of ways. And I love Acts 20, 24. Paul says, However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. We, uh, as followers of Jesus, we can be those who say, I consider my life worth nothing to me. Of course, I don't want to get this virus. Of course, I don't want my loved ones to. But in the grand scheme, I know my eternity is secure. Um, I have a home in heaven. And so may I live into this adventure. May I look at this time in this season as an adventure to say, God, what do you have in store and how can I get on board with that? God bless you guys. Love you so much. And we'll see you next time.